Hi, my name is David from Electric Teaching. I'd like to try to show you how to do the first derivative test on functions. The first derivative test tells us if a function is decreasing or increasing at any point of the graph. We will take the first derivative and plug in x values and plug in x values around the critical points, and I'll explain what that means in a bit, not to see what the values are. I don't care what the numbers are. I just want to see if it's positive, increasing from left and right, or if the, if the derivative value is negative, which means it's decreasing from left to right. Remember, critical points are both the zeros of the function, that's, and the domain errors, if there, <clears throat> if there are any domain errors. What makes zero both in the numerator and in the denominator if there is one? What makes zero is a, is a line I use with my students all the time. What x value makes zero? If you remember from pre-calculus, we're going to take a look at this x cubed minus 4x squared, which has the parent function of just simply wanting to do this movement. It wants to come out of negative infinity, or if the limit was going to the left, would be negative infinity. And it stays increasing throughout most of it. Whenever you take a cubic function and it has something funky on it, as I tell my students, like this minus 4x squared, which will mix it up a little bit, in the middle of the function, the endpoints are still the same. They want to come out. So here's the actual graph. In general, we're trying to learn how to graph this. I'm having the graph up here to give you a visual immediately so that this can make sense right off the bat. And then we'll try to do it and analyze what the graph would look like in a few more problems. Okay, so if you remember your pre-calculus, this graph clearly is increasing to an intercept, decreasing, hits a minimum, and back to increasing. Before we do any calculus, I think it's a great idea to just look at what we know from pre-calculus. In behavior, which we've already talked about, how about intercepts? I think we can see them here, but make sure you understand how I would prove the intercepts. I would factor out the x squared, put it in factor form so I can ask again, what makes zero? What makes zero used for x-intercepts, but also to get critical points and also a bunch of other things in mathematics. And you can see that's why I enjoy using a phrase like that all the time. It keeps it consistent. Double check. This is x cubed. That would be minus 4x squared. Seems like I factored correctly using the zero property to literally figure out what equals zero, what x values make zero. And easily we can see that if x equals zero, that would make this whole equation equal zero. Excuse me, that was a little bit sloppy there. So if you can see x equals zero, <clears throat> and what makes zero with this value, or you can use the opposite of that number idea, that's the same answer, we're going to say four. So we see the intercepts are at zero and four. All right, let's get to the calculus. Calculus now. If I want to get the derivative of this, I'm going to do the power rule, multiply, that's supposed to be an equal sign. Sorry about that. The little digital pad gets excited with the equal sign. So I'm going to use the power rule, 3x squared, and then power rule here. I use the multiply idea. Instead of pulling out the constant, I just simply use the multiply trick, negative 8x to the first. Reduce each exponent by 1. Same idea that we did with x-intercepts, but now we want the critical points. There's no domain errors. There are no domain errors. It's just a parabola. And if I was to factor out, let's see what's common on both sides. I got an x on both sides. Both terms have an x, so I'm going to go 3x minus 8. On both terms here, we've got an x that has been distributed, so I'm going to factor it out. Double check. It does seem to factor out correctly. Now again, my favorite question. x equals 0 and x equals 8 thirds. 8 thirds. If I add 8, divide by 3, yep, that's a quick way of doing that. Think about setting this equal to 0, add 8, divide by 3, and you should be able to get to the answers pretty quickly. Now this is how you analyze it. Now use kind of like a, a table in a sense. Okay, I'm going to mark on a number line, and it'll turn out to be looking like a table, but on a number line I'm going to mark where 0 is. I'm going to mark my other critical point, just approximate it out here at 8 thirds. That's roughly what that is exactly, excuse me, two and two thirds out there. And now what I want to do, this is important, I'm going to plug and chug some values, random values, random values here, here, and here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug into the derivative function, the derivative function. 
I think it's really wise to probably use this right here as the derivative function, what it's equal to. And that way it's easy to see what if I'm going to have a negative or positive value. So let's see, if I was to pick any value over here, like I will choose negative 1. So I'm going to choose negative 1. And if I was to plug negative 1 into this equation, I'm going to be very explicit here. Later I'll get faster at it. It'll look like this, 3 times negative 1 minus 8. can barely fit it in there. Sorry about that. So it looks like we're going to get a negative 3 and a negative 8. So this is now negative 11, and it's now going to be multiplied out front here to the negative 1. As I said before, I really don't want to see the values. I said that up here. I really don't want to see the values, but I just wanted to show you what the value was. It was positive 11, positive 11. The reality is, the reality is, I'm going to clean up this number line, use a different color here. The reality is, is that I just need to know if it's negative or positive. If it's negative, then I know for sure that it's, de that it's decreasing. And if it's positive, I know for sure it's increasing. So between negative infinity, between negative infinity, which would be off in this direction, and all the way up to zero, since there's no critical points, that's the beauty of knowing the critical points. <clears throat> We will find out right here that this is always a positive derivative, which means it is increasing from negative infinity in the x value and also from negative infinity in the y value because the end behavior until it gets up to the critical point, and that's what we know now. That's what we know now. Now I need to plug and chug a value over here. Maybe I'll plug and chug a, how about a 1? I'll plug and chug a 1 here, a positive 1. And this time I'm just going to do some quick analysis. If I put in a positive 1, it's going to be positive, positive times, and let's see, because positive 1 here, and positive times, if I put a 1 in here, it'd be 3 minus 8. So that would be negative. Clearly, this would be positive times negative. And I now know from 0 to 8 thirds, it is negative. The value is negative. I, I'll put a symbol here to remind myself it's negative. And over here, I'll put a symbol to remind myself it's positive, that it's positive over here. So now I know it's decreasing until I get to that x value of 8 thirds, <clears throat> which is down about negative 9 or so. So that's what I've learned so far, that from 0, from 0 to 8 thirds, it is, the graph will be decreasing. The graph will be decreasing. And you can see on this graph it clearly is. And then from 8 thirds out to positive infinity, <clears throat> let's plug and chug, since this is 2 and 2 thirds, I'll just plug and chug a 3 here. So if I was to take it and plug and chug a 3 into the, again, derivative, not the original. Students get confused, so stay clear about that. I would end up with, I'm just going to summarize the 3 being positive. I would get a positive times, and if I put 3 in there, it's 9 minus 8. That would be positive as well. Again, I don't care what the value is. And then I get positive times positive, and then I'll make a big mark that this is positive. In other words, it is increasing from the minimum point all the way out to x is positive infinity. I missed my line a little bit there, but you get the idea. Let's try a slightly harder problem. Let's try a slightly harder problem. How about y equals e to the x times x minus 2? Again, quick analysis of x-intercepts. It seems that we only have one x-intercept at, whoops, that was supposed to be an x-intercept there, x-intercept at, um, I use x, i, n, t, at, let's see, uh, x equal 2 at x equal 2. So we got an x intercept at x equal 2. It's about the only I see, only thing I see that makes 0. I usually would talk about n behavior, but I want to dive right back into the calculus and try to make another table just like before, another number line chart just like before. There's probably a word for it that I can't remember, and I for, forgive me if a textbook in front of you tells you what the name of that is. I call it just analysis of the derivative or first derivative test analysis. Let's take the derivative. This is a product rule product rule. So we've got 
F and G in the most textbooks. Those be F and G, and we're going to do F G prime plus G F prime. If you remember your product rule, so we're going to get that the first derivative. I'm going to I'm using Y prime here instead of F prime. Hopefully you're used to just seeing the difference in here. So F G prime derivative. Of that's easy. I'll be very explicit here and put the times one in there, and then plus G, which is the X minus two times, oops, almost messed up there, let me try that again, times f prime, and the derivative of f is e to the x. Again, this is f g prime, f g prime, plus g, g f prime, which the derivative is itself. Again, factor out. Hopefully you're used to factoring out some strange things like cosines and e to the x's and other radicals and stuff like that. So e to the x is going to be factored out here. Simply leaves a 1 plus x minus 2. If I set this equal to 0 to figure out where the critical points are, I don't see any domain errors in here, so nothing divided by 0 or anything strange like that. And we're going to simply see that, let's see, I've got to clean this up here. e to the x, always remember the graph of e to the x, the graph of e to the x has no x-intercepts. Therefore, what makes 0 here? Nothing makes 0 with e to the x. It's just a graph. Always keep that in mind. The exponential graph doesn't have any x-intercepts. Looks something like that. Okay, so there's nothing that makes 0 here. I still ask, what makes 0? We're going to clean this up. What do we got? x minus 1, x minus 1, collecting the like terms. And what makes 0? What x value makes 0 there? Looks like we got x equal 1. We have one single critical point. One single critical point. It seems that whatever this graph looks like, it changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at the value 1, at the x value 1. So let's plug in, how about 0? Let's plug in maybe 0. Let's try x equal 0. So if I come to the derivative, it's the easiest to plug in here. e to the x is always positive, right? So no reason to plug in there and say positive 1 because this is always positive. So I'm always going to have a positive. It really just depends on this one. So if x is 0, this is negative 1 times a positive value. Again, that's an always positive e to the x times a negative result, technically negative 1. So what we're getting here is then a positive times negative this graph is decreasing. I'm going to put a negative sign there. Before it gets to 1. That's all the way from infinity. That's all the way from infinity to 1. Negative infinity, excuse me. Okay, so keep that in mind. Then from 1 to infinity, since there's no critical points, there's no reason for it to have a change of direction. It will always be consistent, increasing or decreasing. In this case, if I plug and chug at 2, come back over here, you get a positive times a positive, and that will look like that. So we are now, if I, I didn't write that, x equal 2, we now know whatever this graph looks like, it is going to be decreasing until it hits 1, and then it's increasing after 1. I actually have the graph right here, and, it, and I wanted to show you what this looks like. So here's the graph, and sure enough, it is decreasing until it gets to x equal 1, and then it's increasing after that. It's increasing after that. This is really important now. If you have decreasing to increasing, you can make some further analysis. Whether the book tells you to do this or not, recognize that this has to be a min value a relative min value. So you have found the min. The min is at 1, comma, and you should plug and chug back in the original equation. That would be then at y equal e to the 1 times x. Oh, excuse me, we know what the x value is. Oh, I didn't mean to erase that much. Sorry about that. e to the 1 times 1 minus 2, or that's 1 minus 2, sorry about that, negative e. So this comes down negative e. This is the point, 1 comma negative e. I hope that helps make sense of this. So now that we know that it's decreasing to increasing, it must have been a min. Since I'm going to run out of time here, I'm going to show you the next part and the second part of the video here. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that I have helped.